Hi guys, how you all doing? Welcome to my channel. In today's video, because it's the 100th video on this channel, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and that is a workspace or art room tour because a couple of you have requested it and I thought it would be fun. As you can see, I do share this space with my husband so all of his stuff you can probably see behind. I'm going to spare showing you that and just show you my end of the room and all my art supplies. So if you want to see that, keep on watching and let's get into it. I thought I'd start off with a quick pan around the room and show you the two bits of furniture I'm most proud of. The large chest of drawers to the right and the table which is actually an upcycled dining room table. Both of these I got very cheap and second hand on Facebook and covered with a matte wood effect contact paper to brighten them up, make them look a bit more modern and provide a nice background for my art videos. On the table I do have two angle poise lamps both fitted with daylight bulbs, one at either end and of course my computer. I like to keep my work area pretty clear so there's not much else on the table apart from this. I do have a pot of essential pens as well as an aloe vera plant and a couple of candles. To record all my art videos I use a Sony Handycam camcorder and I attach it to this pole which is fixed to the ceiling. I will put links to all the things that I use in the description box below. Now whilst this doesn't have a flexible arm, it does enable me to work unrestricted without tripods in the way and record a good top down view of my artwork. Under the table and to the right of my chair I have this small pull out trolley on wheels which was £15 from my local hobby craft. This enables me to keep all the things I need close to hand like my pencil case, a brush for cleaning the table and some post-its. On the next shelf I have some unfinished artwork for my nephew as well as any new products I need to try. Underneath this I have my camera and any spare batteries and microphones. To the right of my desk on the floor are these two large flamingo boxes and these are home to everything I need for my Etsy shop. So the first one is full of packing materials so I've got cello bags as well as tissue paper, envelopes and packing supplies. The second one is home to all the prints that I sell as I have extra copies of them ready and waiting to go should anyone order anything. On the other side of my desk is where I keep my large tripod which I use for different camera angles and so on. And underneath the desk on this side is where I keep my printer and spare paper. I also have a rather large box with acoustic foam in it which I set up when I'm recording audio for my videos. I haven't put this on the wall yet as I'm not quite sure how best to fix it. Next to the printer I have things like a light box as well as a portfolio case with all my original artwork and some boards that I use to back for my artwork. To the left of my desk is this wooden shelving unit which is home to all of the papers that I have as well as more bulky supplies. I've organised it by art supplies so on the top shelf I have canvases as well as alkaloid oils which I haven't yet used. On the second shelf I have all of my pastel supplies so I have soft pastels, pastel pencils and all the papers that I've collected over the years to draw on. There's a mixture of different colours and sizes and pretty much everything that you'd need to draw with pastels on. In this rather interesting looking roll are all the pastels that I've collected from when I was younger and this is a real mixture of different Derwent pastel pencils as well as some Faber-Castell ones. Underneath the pastels is where I keep all of my drawing papers. I have a lot of these Strathmore toned papers as well as some Bristol papers in various sizes. To the right of the paper is where I keep a variety of different pencils. So I have the Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, the Derwent ink pencils and my collection of Prismacolor pencils. I also have the 40 set of Caran d'Ache Luminous coloured pencils as well as two tins of the Faber-Castell Polychromos. The first one I got ages ago and the second one I got when it was on sale. 
I had fun swatching out all of these different colours on some swatch cards I made before I used them for a couple of my recent videos. The next shelf is where I keep all of my watercolour papers as well as the travel sketchbooks that I've been working on for my Friday videos. On top of my watercolour papers I have this watercolour book by Hannah Mule, which is something that I bought recently and I'm looking forward to testing out in possibly a new video on a Friday. I also have this rather unusual Clairefontaine natural coloured paper which is again something that I want to test out in a future video. The bottom shelf is where I keep all of my sketchbooks as well as some note paper and smaller supplies which are in this basket. Next to the sketchbooks I like to keep handy a supply of A4 line paper. This is what I use to make notes on for voiceovers to art videos. Next to this there are two A4 folders, the pink one is actually empty but the brown one is home to all of the swatches for my different paints and things. And lastly underneath this shelving unit is my precision paper trimmer. Now before we dive into the chest of drawers on the right hand side of the room, I just wanted to show you the print that hangs above it. This is a signed print by the artist Gary Hodges who is an amazing graphite pencil artist. He also does a lot of work towards animal conservation and I picked it up at a London art exhibition on a really nice day out with my dad. So back to the room tour and this six drawer unit, which is again something that I upcycled and modified using the same contact paper as I did for the desk. On top of this unit is where I keep my blue snowball microphone, which is what I use to voice over all of my videos. I also have this homemade storage for my washi tapes, which is something that my father-in-law made me. It's really neat as it keeps them all tidy and together and even has a serrated edge along the top to make cutting tape easier. This is also where I keep my favourite pencil sharpener, which is the Derwent Superpoint. On the side here for easy access, I also like to keep all of the paintbrushes that I use regularly. Now let's dive into the first of these six drawers and this first one is home to all of my liquid watercolours and watercolour inks. This is also where I keep my Winsor & Newton inks as well as spare dip pens, pipettes and my Dr. PH Martin's Bombay inks. Moving on to the second drawer and this is where I keep all of my pencils, charcoal and spare bits and pieces. So in this little box here I have some charcoal as well as some General's charcoal pencils which I am yet to test out. Under this is a couple of art sets including a box that I had when I was at school and came from WH Smith's. I haven't used it an awful lot, but it's still there if I need it. This drawer is also where I keep my zest -It pencil blend and a selection of the Micron fineliners, all in different colours. I also keep in these Ziploc bags spare things like blenders as well as all my pan pastels. This drawer also contains a lot of things that I haven't really used much, so perhaps there'll be ideas for future videos, who knows. So I have the Mars Lumograph pencils, I have my Faber-Castell drawing pencils, as well as some Color Razor pencils by Prismacolor, some water-soluble sketching pencils by Derwent, and some of these Color Soft skin tones. I also have a lot of different sponges and things for using to blend pastels with here, as well as these ginormous colour blenders. So lastly in this drawer I have two more Ziploc bags with lots of spare pencils and fine liners. Now moving on to the third drawer on this side and this is where I keep all of my spare watercolour supplies. So another Ziploc bag with paintbrushes that I don't really use that much but I don't want to get rid of. So they're always come in handy and I like to keep them all together. 
I also have some spatulas here for when I used to do a bit of acrylic painting as well as spare Pento water brushes and all that kind of thing. These paint brushes are extremely old but I have kept them because I might use them for oil painting or something like that later on. I've also got bagged up my Mission Gold watercolours and a few odds and ends in this bag as well. In this paper bag are my collection of professional watercolours by Winsor & Newton that I bought in my local art store. I also have a Koi Travel watercolour kit which I thought I might take out and about at some point and these trial packs of Daniel Smith watercolours. These again I still have to use. This tin here is the Schmincke Horror Dam and it was my first set but I haven't actually got any paints in there now. I've also got some Winsor & Newton Cotman sets, the first one being the smaller of the two, the second one I bought when it was on offer in Amazon. As you can probably tell by now I am a bit of a hoarder and I do love buying art materials so I collect them up thinking that I'm going to use them in the future and I will, I'm just not sure when yet. So here I have my Winsor & Newton professional set that you saw me review and my favourite set at the moment that I'm really loving which is my set of half pans by Schmincke. I have also collected up a couple of other palettes which I am yet to use properly including the Holbein 24 set of tubes and the White Knights palette. Next is this empty aluminium tin which I was going to put tube watercolours in and the 36 watercolour set by Kiritaki. On the bottom of this drawer is my large studio palette by Magello which you may have seen me review in a previous video. This drawer is also where I keep a variety of masking fluids, some gum arabic and some brush cleaner as well. So now it's time to move on to the last of these three drawers and the top one contains mostly markers and paint things. So in the left hand side I have a set of Copic markers which I bought on eBay I believe as well as some of the Winsor & Newton Pro markers. I also have quite a lot of fine liners as well as some brush pens when I got into doing brush lettering. The 48 set of water brush pens by Arteza is another product that I want to try on one of my videos, so watch this space. Then we get on to the Sharpie markers and some more fine liners, which are things that I tend to use more for cartoons and illustrations rather than finished pieces of artwork. I also have some gesso, some fluid retarder and a really big tub of Winsor & Newton white paint. At the back of this drawer is where I keep all my acrylic paints, a mixture in the Ziploc bag as well as a 24 set of the Liquitex Basics. I also have a few odds and ends of things that I haven't really used and still want to try out. I have some Posca pens as well as an introductory set that I got on sale of the water mixable oils. Next we have a drawer full of all things palettes, so on the left hand side I have a mixture of plastic palettes as well as my nice porcelain palette as well as a few spray bottles and that kind of thing as well. I also like to keep spare jam jars because I use them for water containers for painting. Then lastly I have a tear off palette which is really good for acrylic paints as well as a stay wet palette which is also really good when painting with acrylics. Lastly I have this frisket film which is useful for masking off large areas and protecting them from paint or pastels. This last drawer is a bit random and this bag I bought with the intention of taking it for plein air painting outside. This is also home to my gouache which is something that I'm really getting back into recently. These are the Winsor & Newton designer squash, but I also have some cheaper ones by Daler & Rowney which are really useful for testing out techniques. This little gadget is a scraper for removing acrylic and oil paints from your palette 
and I also have in here some fixative which I use for pastel work. In this little caddy is everything that I don't know where else to put. So it's got all sorts of fits and bobs, spare refills for pencils, spare fine liners and basically a lot of other bits and pieces that I'm not really sure where else they'd go. This is also where I keep my embossing tools and my craft knife. Next is a bit of a strange one, it's the Body Chan Posable Figure which I bought with the aim of improving my figure drawing and drawing different poses. Under this I have some acetate sheets which I've made up in the form of grids to help me draw more accurately. Now in this to do tin is another lot of stuff that I don't really know where to put, so it's a bit of a mixture. I have in it blue tack, I have in it my magic erasers, as well as some spare half pans for making up paint palettes. I also have in it this proportional divider by Derwent and some little cups which I was going to use for ink and paint mixing. And that is pretty much it. It's not particularly fancy or extravagant, but I like it. It's a nice bright space where I'm inspired to create and I consider myself very fortunate to have it. And hopefully I've showed you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to make a space feel homely. I love upcycling old furniture and the addition of a few plants or candles can really help to set the mood and make a calm, relaxing area for you to work in. But having your own art room is not essential to producing good art. There will be those of you, like I used to, who use the dining room table to work and that's fine. Creativity comes from within and if you really don't feel inspired working inside, then why not take a sketchbook outside? That's something that I'm looking forward to doing as the weather improves, as what better inspiration to be creative than nature. There are still a few things that I'd like to do, like maybe put up some bookshelves in this right hand corner for all my art books, but that's how it is for now. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour, don't forget if there's anything that you've seen in today's video that you'd like me to do a video on perhaps in the future then put a comment in the box below. If you've liked this video also don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, take care, bye!